Hey guys, Paul here with Patek. Welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. Uh, today I'm going to do something different. I was looking for some supplemental lighting for my garage DIY workshop, whatever you want to call it, and I came across these Lumeri High Bay Smart Lights. And so I reached out to Lumeri and asked them if uh, they would send them out to me, and so I got two of them. You can find them on uh, line. I think they're about 159 bucks a piece. We're also going to take a look at the hub uh, that you can get for these lights, which is about another 50 bucks. And so what I'm going to do is a thorough unboxing on these lights. I'll go through all the pieces, everything that comes with the kit. And then I'm also going to cover the installation. Uh, there's a Bluetooth module that comes with these lights. And so I'm going to cover how to set it up to the Bluetooth module. There's actually a remote controller that comes with the lights. And then I'm going to show you how to set this up so that you can just walk into your garage and do something like, Hey Alexa, lights on please. <laughs> So again, I've never dealt with high bay lights before, so I was really intrigued. So if any of this resonates with you, stick around and I'll show you how to set them up in your garage and get them working. Okay, so let's jump right into the unboxing. So as you can see, Lumeri, smart UFO, LED high bay lights, 150 watts, 22,000 lumens, and then your range is 2700K to 6500K. So that's gonna give us that nice bright white uh, daylight balance lighting that we're all looking for. So with no further ado, let's open this box. I've already opened the box, but uh, I wanted to keep this as realistic as possible for you. So we'll just go through the motions again. And you can see exactly what I saw when I first opened the box. Okay, so let's take a look here. One remote control, which requires couple of AAA batteries, and that'll allow you to control these lights by remote control. One instruction manual, high bay light user manual. And somewhere over here, we've got a hook. So this is the hook that you're gonna to use to hang it on, whatever you're gonna hang it on in your garage. I'm gonna show you that I used an eye bolt. Uh, really straightforward to do, and you're looking at half inch pipe threads, half inch NPT threads on this guy here. So we'll put that aside. Last but not least. You have this Bluetooth module here and it comes with a little protector on the pins and you just want to make sure that you screw this into the light before you power them up for the first time. And so let's just put that over to the side here and get that out of the way. Get rid of this cardboard here and we can get to the main item. So here it is, this is your high bay light. This is what it looks like. And I can see one thing I have missing here. Oh, uh, there it is. This little safety plug, not safety plug, but it's just a kind of a dust protector, would be installed on yours when they come brand new. And so you're just gonna take that out. If I sit this down like so, you're gonna take off your protector there. And you're going to screw in your module like this. And so this is your Bluetooth module. And this is what's going to talk to your remote control. And then if we're talking about connecting to the internet or Alexa, then we'd be talking about using this Lumeri Zigbee uh, BLL Mesh Mini Hub. And we'll get to that later in the, in the review. But So that's your basic box opening. And if I flip this bad boy over, it comes with about six feet of cord and you can simply plug these into uh, a convenient receptacle which I installed in my garage yesterday. And so that's what we'll be doing next. Okay, so one more thing quickly before we go out in the garage and do the uh, installation on this, we might as well 
You notice I'm setting the lights on the edge of the box and that's so that because the um, Bluetooth module extends down from the light. So that just gives that module a little bit of protection. Uh, but what I thought we would do is just take the hook. So half inch uh, national pipe thread is really easy stuff here. And we're just gonna thread it in here. So what's happening there is it's binding with the screw. So I'm gonna take a Phillips head screw, I'll wind this out and then we'll finish this up. Okay, so I'm just gonna change the position here a little bit since how I'm right-handed. So I'm just gonna wind that screw out a little bit. So I just changed the light position a little bit because I'm right-handed. So what I've done is just wound this screw out. Oh, there, I've just taken it too far. So now I've got to get her back in there, like so. And so now you can just wind your hook in all the way. You could snug that up with a wrench if you want, or you could do something like this maneuver here just snug is really all you need and then now you can come back with your screwdriver and just snug that up okay and then you're good to go this is going to hook onto your eye bolt in the garage uh, or a warehouse or wherever you're going to install these lights and if you flip it over it's going to sit like that so now i can transport this out to the garage and i know nothing's going to get damaged Okay, so before we head out to the garage, let's just pop open our hub assembly here. And this is the hub itself, pretty small as you can see. And it looks like it's got a USB mini uh, port here for powering the device. There's a reset button and the usual specifications on the bottom of the device. A little instruction manual inside. We have a power supply and a cable. So you've got a uh, USB, standard USB cable. It's gonna plug into the back of this here. And then the other end is gonna plug into uh, the hub to provide power. And then you've got your reset button, set of instructions. And of course this ties into the app. So one of the first things that you wanna do before uh, setting up your high bay lights is download the Lumeri app so that you have all that ready to go. And then when you get to the point where you're doing your installation and setup, everything is, is on the phone and you can just walk through the setup procedures. Okay guys, welcome to Anybody's Garage North America. This is a typical two-car garage workshop. I use half of the garage for my woodworking DIY projects. The other half, we got bicycle storage and, you know, outdoor storage, etc., etc. Okay, so... Um, what we're going to do, I'll show you a panorama of the garage. I've got two receptacles already installed, so I've done all the wiring. It's really just to hook these in and plug them in, and then we'll go through the installation of the apps and get the thing up and working. And so what you're going to need, you have to hook this thing onto an eye bolt of some description. And the ones I used... I just picked them up from Home Depot. These are the larger, bigger brothers of what I used. I used 5 16 these are 3 8 But as you can see, basically, you know, the loop on this thing is just gonna go through the eye bolt, and the eye bolt is gonna go up into your ceiling joists and give you a very secure connection. You don't have to worry about the lights ever falling down. So, okay, here's one of the lights already installed in the center of the garage. And all I have to do is plug it in and run through the installation. Now the other light, I'll try to do this fairly smoothly for you. I'm just on a tripod with this. So, and that little orange thing that's sticking out of the receptacle is basically just uh, my Klein Tools tester to tell me that there's no power at the receptacle just yet. And so maybe this would be a good uh, opportunity to just give you kind of a 360 of the garage. So that's the side door. There's the bench. This will be really behind the scenes so you can see my C-stand. And yeah, so the far side over there, I'll just drop this down. Kind of hard to see with the ladder in the way. There's a couple of bicycles towards the door. 
So this will give you a better idea. This is the doorway where I come into the garage, coat rack, refrigerator. There's my old mechanics tool, tool chest, one workbench. There's the bench where I was recording from. You can see the Lumeria light sitting on the bench. And pretty straightforward. And then if I stop here and just crank this sucker straight up, you can see where I've installed the one Lumeri light. And if I turn this, there's the other one. So kind of hard to see uh, from this angle, but uh, basically I've got the lights in the center of the garage, in fact. So right here is dead center of the two garage doors. So I've got the one light here and the other one is going to be here. So that's what I'll be doing next. I'll hook this thing up and then we'll get into the installation and setup. Okay, so now we're going to connect our lights. We're going to turn the power on the lights and then we're going to follow step number three, which is connect your Lumeri smart device to the app using Bluetooth communication. Please note if you wish to control the device, Remotely, a gateway needs to be accessed. Okay, so once you've downloaded the Lumeri app and you've registered your product, and you're basically going to, as you can see, I've got the Lumeri app already downloaded here and ready to go. So what I need to do now is just power on the lights. And as you can see, You can see they're flashing, which is good. That's in the pairing mode. And so let's follow the numbers here. Okay. Ensure that your phone is connected to a network and Bluetooth is turned on. Power on the light, which will start flashing or breathing. Enter the Lumeri app on your phone and click on the plus icon. Add device. Discovering devices. We're going to add those devices. And it looks like that's going to take a second or two. I'll probably speed this up in post. Oh, there's one of them connected. Oh, there's both of them connected. Fantastic. So we've got both lights connected and now we can do a little bit of control with them. So let's just click on the, oh, we're going to press done here. Okay. Okay, pretty straightforward. So we can, we should be able to switch them on and off. There's the lights going off, at least one of them going off. And there's the other light coming on. I don't have them set up in a group yet, so we should be able to Oh wow, you can really see the color change there. Fantastic. So let's take that over back to where it was and you've got quick settings here. You can just press the button. You can add your own settings if you want to save them into favorites. So, so far, so good. That's great. So I think probably the next obvious thing that you'd want to do is if you just scroll up a little bit here or scroll down, whatever the case might be, and we should be able to vary the intensity on the lights. So it looks like I'm controlling the intensity of the left light. Uh, because I don't have both of them in a group yet. So I'll put them in group in, in a group later. But uh, so, so far so good. These lights are working uh, as promised and that's a good thing. So at this point, uh, probably the next thing that I want to do is create a group. So I'm just going to click on and scroll down. Here we go. Create group. Okay. And let's add this guy here. Devices to be added. Create the group. Devices in the same group can be controlled together. That's great. Enter the group name. Mary Smart High Bay Lights. Okay, that's good enough for now. Okay, and now let's just scroll up and see if we're actually controlling the group.
and there we go. We got both lights in a group and you can see the light levels are going together. They're going right down and right back up. So now let me give you a shot of the ceiling uh, and I'll vary the intensity of the light just so you can get a sense of what you're going to get. Okay, so here's the lights installed. And if it looks like the lights are tilted, that's just my 24 G Master lens giving you that uh, effect. So let's turn them off. And I'm using my phone to do this. Turn them on again. So that's all the way to the extreme blue side. So 6500 Kelvin. So I'll move it to about, uh, oops, let's see. Let's drop the intensity down here. There's 60% and that's down to about 30% and that's about 12%. Let's bring it all the way back up again. Now let me tilt the camera down. And I think this is where you're really going to see uh, what you're getting. Okay, so this is full intensity. Apologies for jittering the camera there. Uh, okay. So let's take it all the way to the, so that's 2700 Kelvin, that nice orange light that uh, <laughs> I guess you, you can use for artistic purposes. There I'm going to 50% uh, white and I'll just take this all the way over and that's 6500 uh, Kelvin. So I probably, now let's drop the intensity a little bit. There's 58. There's 35, that's 15%. So these lights are making a dramatic uh, difference in my garage for sure. Okay guys, so I thought what I would do at this point to give you a good perspective. So, you know, here's the workbench. I've got lots of light in the garage now. Both of the lights are on. And so I have three dots here. So on the extreme left side, I've got the 2700, I've got 6500 on the right, and in the middle, I got the daylight balanced, the nice white uh, 5000K. And so that's what you're looking at now. And I'm just gonna knock it down to, there is 50%. So that's 5500K at 50%. Um, and that's probably, you know, just looking around, I would say that's a pretty decent uh, level of light. I can bump it up a little bit. There's 60%. There's 70%. So the whole idea uh, for having this additional lighting here was that if I'm working on a piece of wood or something like that, there's no shadows when I go to measure things out with the pencil and, and that type of thing. So, um, so far so good. The lights are working uh, as described that they would. Okay, so set a timer, just go into your lights and uh, right here on the bottom. So you've got home and you've got timer and then press the plus icon and you can see you can set to whatever time you want, whatever day of the week that you want. Uh, and then you can save it up here in the top right and you'll be off to the races. I don't really need a timer function myself. I may do it down the road, but right now uh, it's not something I don't think I'm going to use. So I'll just hit cancel and return and we're back to square one. Okay, so I thought before we set up the Bluetooth remote controller, it'd be worthwhile to just take a second and go into the app. And so in the first several sequences of this video, I was using my uh, 60D light just boomed overhead about, I don't know, 30 degrees. And so now I'm only using the Lumeri high bay lights. And I thought it would be worse. So right now they're at 50%. So I don't have my 60D light on. All I have is the Luberry uh, lights lighting me up. And that's down at 10%. So I'm just looking into the screen on my A7 IV here. There's 40%. To me, that doesn't look too bad actually. So yeah, I just thought I'd do that little demo for you. Okay, so now we'll put the phone aside 
Okay guys, so let's see if we can pair the Bluetooth remote. Uh, we're gonna need to use the pair button in the center here and, and maybe the reset button. And so what I noticed is that in the manual, when you come to page 18, 19, it looks like on 19, those are the instructions for pairing, but they're not. You've gotta flip over to page 20. And it says here, use the remote control. It's powered by two AAA batteries. The device needs to be connected to the app. Turn the switch off once and wait until the green indicator light on the module. So that's the module on the high bay lights. The little green indicator will go out. Then turn the switch back on. Within 30 seconds, the light and the remote control will enter the pairing mode. Now you have to press and hold the pair button on the remote control for one second to initiate the pairing. The light will breathe once to confirm successful pairing. Well, let's give that a shot, shall we? I've turned the lights out. I'm watching the green module. The module's gone out. I've turned the lights back on. Now I've hit pair. And I noticed the flash. And so if everything is copacetic, I should be able to reduce the intensity of the lights with the remote control now. And oh my goodness, look at that. Easy peasy. <laughs> I love it. This product just just works the way it's supposed to, which is nice. And then on the remote control, which also is very nice, is that they have the different degrees of Kelvin that you can set. So if I wanna to switch to, there's a nice orange light for that artistic uh, mode. Uh, there's 5,000 if I'm doing something photographic, although I always aim for 5,500, but uh, in my basement studio, my white balance is 5,100K. I do a custom white balance um, and then we have the options to hit 50% on the lighting. We can go down to 10% and we can go back up to 100%. So for this particular video, I would say 50 is probably good and I would even drop it a little more. How do I look? Does that look moody enough? So now we've completed the pairing on the uh, Bluetooth remote, which is cool. It works as uh, specified, so I'm a very happy guy. Now we're gonna see if we can connect up the hub and control the hub through Alexa, or control the lights through Alexa. Let's do that now. Okay guys, so next up we're gonna install or connect our hub. And so we have to have the Lumeri app installed, so I'm gonna plug the hub in. And then basically your instructions are pretty simple. It says before proceeding, uh, make sure your phone is connected to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and the products are within range of the network. Also ensure the gateway is powered on and in network distribution mode indicated by the lights. If the gateway indicator is not flash, it may need to be reset. To reset it, press and hold the reset button for five seconds until the indicator light begins to flash. So let's take a look at that. We'll plug it in and you can see exactly what the hub is gonna do. Okay guys, so let's plug in the hub here. I'm probably just gonna have the hub sitting uh, on the bench here like this or on the shelf. We'll plug this in up here. Hope you can see that. I've got one red light and one blue light. And so that's the first step to getting the hub up and working. Okay, so I just went over to grab my phone, guys, and I can see the Lumeri red light. The indicator light is flashing as it's supposed to. I'm just going to tap on here. I'm going to hit the add device, and now it says enable the location permission to get the Wi-Fi name automatically. I'm just going to say set now. And under settings, allow Lumeri access. So let's go into that. I will say while well, using the app. Precise location is set, and it looks like we're all set. So, now I can go back into the Lumeri app, enter your Wi-Fi information. So it's showing me uh, my Wi-Fi name and password. I'm gonna hit next. And now I can see the Lumeri, Zigbee, and BLE. So it's loading that into the app, I guess, or it's registering it or binding it, however you want to describe it. So it might take a second. Certainly didn't take long on the app when we initially set up the lights. There it is, it's all set up. I can click done. And so now it's showing me uh, exactly what's going on here uh, with the hub. 
Okay guys, so as you can see, we've got the hub set up in the Lumeri app now. And so the next thing is, if you, if you take the manual, so I've gone as far as I can go with the instructions that come with the hub, now I'm working with the instructions that come with the high bay lights, and on the last couple of pages, this is where uh, it gives you instructions to work with Alexa, or I think you can work with Google as well, Google Assistant. So I've got Alexa, we're gonna work with Alexa. I think it should be pretty straightforward. Log into the Lumeri app, tap the smart device, and enter into... I don't know that. <laughs> That's what you get for mentioning her name. Okay. So now, I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to go... Just tap the smart device and enter... Okay, so I'll tap on the, the uh, hub device. And I'm going to... Tap on the little pencil icon here and tap Alexa in third party control. Okay, so as you can see, you've got Alexa, Google Assistant, and Smart Things. So I'm going to tap on Alexa. Tap sign in with Amazon, bottom right there. It's thinking about it. Link Lumeri with Alexa. Okay, so I'm going to tap on the link button. So that's binding. So it says here, already linked with Amazon Alexa. You can control Alexa-enabled devices with Amazon Alexa speakers, such as... Okay, so it looks like we're done here. Now we can test it out. Alexa, turn off my high bay lights. A couple things share that name. Lumeri Smart High Bay Light A1 and Lumeri Smart High Bay Light A12. Which one did you want? Both. Sorry, I didn't find a group or device name phone. Okay, so, so far so good. It looks like my Alexa is, she's recognizing the two lights. I'm just not giving her the right direction to activate them. So let me uh, dig into that and I'll see if I can get that sorted. Okay guys, so uh, here was what the issue was. So I'm in the Lumeri Zigbee and Bealy Mesh um, app or mesh section of the Lumeri app. And what I didn't do was, you probably won't be able to see this, but you can see the little black lights here. I forgot to add the devices. So once you set up the hub, you have to add the devices. Even though they're already added into the Bluetooth section of the app, you have to add them into the hub. And I took a step further and I renamed them to Garage 1 and Garage 2. And so now, Alexa, turn Garage 1 and 2 off. Alexa, turn Garage 2 off. Okay. Alexa, turn Garage 1 on. Okay. Alexa, turn Garage 2 on. Okay. Alexa, turn Garage Lights off. Okay, guys, so I thought what I would do at this point to give you a good perspective. So, you know, here's the workbench. I've got lots of light in the garage now. Both of the lights are on. And so I have three dots here. So on the extreme left side, I've got the 2700. I've got 6500 on the right. And in the middle, I got the daylight balance, the nice white uh, 5000K. And so that's what you're looking at now. And I'm just going to knock it down to there is... 50%. So that's 5,500K at 50%. Um, and that's probably, you know, just looking around, I would say that's a pretty decent uh, level of light. I can bump it up a little bit. There's 60%. There's 70%. So the whole idea uh, for having this additional lighting here was that if I'm working on a piece of wood or something like that, there's no shadows when I go to measure things out with the pencil and, and that type of thing. So, um, so far so good. The lights are working uh, as described that they would. Okay guys, I think it's time to wrap this one up. We got everything working in the system. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. This was a long video when you gotta unbox 
you know, you got to do an unboxing, you have to set up the remote control, have to set up the app, you got to set up the hub, you got to set up Alexa, all that good stuff. It takes a little bit of doing, but uh, we managed to get through it. I covered the installation on both of the lights for you, the Bluetooth modules, how to actually connect them. One thing I didn't mention is I'm just using an Echo Dot uh, fifth generation speaker that I picked up on sale last week, 50% off. It was about 35 bucks. Uh, so that seemed to work out really well, which was good. And the only thing I didn't cover was how to actually tie into your electrical system. And I had an existing switch. I just piggybacked, pulled power off of that switch, brought it over to the other switch. So my Lumeri lights, my high bay lights are on a separate circuit, but they'll stay on now because I can use these guys to control them. So that's kind of cool. Well, those guys and Alexa to control them. So it's going to make my life a little bit easier. And as you can see, the lights are good for illuminating your projects in the shop, as well as they're good for photography because they'll give you 55 uh, K daylight balance. So can't get any better than that. So thanks so much for watching. If you found the video useful, hit the subscribe, like, and notification bells for me. And if you have questions about, you know, connecting into your wiring or setting these things up, by all means, connect in. I'll try and help you out as best I can. I try to get back to people as quick as I can, but you know how it goes sometimes. So anywho, take care. I'll see you in the next one.